Mr. Chairman, members of the committee, this is uh, the duly advertised uh, meeting of the Joliet Plan Commission for the month of April. We've got uh, six items in front of us and uh, no requests to move anything forward. So we will start with item number one under new business. And we've got two items that pertain to the Audubon Country Club. Uh, Mark Basso is here, who is the president of the Audubon. Normally we would have had Mike Hansen, the attorney, but as we all know, he, we, the death of his son uh, and the funeral was today. So our, our condolences go out to Mike, the attorney for this case and many others. Uh, but I'll read the staff report. We've got two items. One is A415. It's an amendment to the annexation agreement for the Audubon Country Club. And then M115, which is an amendment to the master development plan for the Audubon Country Club. In this case, the applicant is Audubon Realty LLC. They are the owners of the property. The requested action is the amendments to those two documents. The purpose is to allow the addition of team condominium buildings it currently that area is zoned I-1 Light Industrial and it's generally located at the northwest corner of Center Point Way in Millsdale. Size of the property is 353.7 acres and it operates as a private racing facility. Uh, surrounding land use and zoning on all sides are industrial Center Point properties with IT zoning. Under site history, the property was annexed and zoned to I-1 along with an annexation agreement back in 2001. In 2003, an amendment to the annexation agreement was approved with a master development plan and a special use for the open-air recreational facility for outdoor driving, racing, testing of motor vehicles. In March of 06, a revised master development plan was approved to allow the additional team units and the team lot structures in the southwestern area of the parcel. In 07, an amendment to the annexation agreement and the master development plan and the special use to allow a country club building with condominiums for owners was approved but never built. In March of 13, an amendment to the annexation agreement and the master development plan and the special use, an amendment to the special use to allow the expansion of the open air recreational facility was approved. Under special information, the petitioner is requesting approval of an amendment to the existing annexation agreement and the master development plan to allow the addition of team condominium buildings at the Autobahn Country Club racing facility. As part of the proposal, members would be allowed to own a part of a six-unit condominium building in order to provide more affordable option at the club. Each unit would accommodate five to six cars within a 25 by 50 foot garage area and will also have a 25 by 25 foot upper lounge area with a deck overlooking the south circuit on the track and there's a floor plan that shows that. Outside material and features will replicate the existing team units. And then lastly, the Community Design Review Board reviewed this on April the 2nd, and the minutes are attached, and that concludes our staff report. Thank you. Could we have the petitioner for this item, please? Hi, Mark Basso, founder and president of Audubon. What did you drive over in? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, did you have anything to add to staff's report? Uh, it's it's been uh, really uh, exciting. The last ten years is at our ten year anniversary, and you know we've sold seventy four lots around the property, and a lot of members, you know, have been building these amazing garages. And now uh, we're excited to bring this new product out, which is something as a you know a step up the ladder. A lot of guys don't want the huge garage, so this is a neat. Product and there's a lot of people now that are you know baby boomer generation like us are starting to downsize with their homes and so they look at this as a uh, an affordable place so if they downsize to a condo apartment they can still have a place to keep their toys so yeah it's very, very and exciting. there's no living space well there's uh, upstairs is a loft area that you know people might stay out for the weekend and things like that so you know it's not a permanent residence for anybody okay any comments or questions from the commission. Jim, does the zoning accommodate that additional living area? Is that a, yeah, that part? and we've always taken that into consideration. The existing team units that are out there now, they're all fully fire rated and built according to code, and so they anticipate, you know, the, with fire ratings and everything, the, the, you know, the sort of the workshop storage area down below and living space above. It's incorporated into the whole thing. Yeah, and, and we also approved them, but uh, the economy sort of conspired against them. They were going to build kind of a... A, a motel condominium type building out there, which was going to be sort of a different thing where uh, that would be sort of the banquet hall and living space above that on several floors. And uh, this is a sort of an alternative to that. Very good. 
Any other comments or questions from the commission? Any comments or questions from the audience? Hearing none, then a motion's in order for A-4-15. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Ms. DeAndre? Aye. Mr. Kella? Aye. Mr. Rusinellis? Aye. Mr. Shatina? Aye. Mr. Walden? Aye. Mr. Cox? Aye. Mr. Strong? Aye. A motion is in order for M-1-15. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Kella? Aye. Mr. Rusinellis? Aye. Mr. Shatina? Aye. Mr. Walden? Aye. Mr. Cox? Aye. Ms. DeAndre? Aye. Mr. Strong? Aye. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you. Next up, item number two. It's actually a new business item number five, but I've got these sort of in sequential order. Z215. It's a reclassification of 20 Mississippi Avenue from an R3, which is a one and two family zoning, to an R2 single family zoning. The applicant is Mary Ann Craig, owner of the property. The requested action is the down zoning to the R2, and the purpose is to allow the zoning with the ex uh, land use at that parcel at this time. <clears throat> Existing zoning is an R3. The request is to go to an R2 single family. 20 Mississippi is on the east side of Mississippi, north of 1st. Size of the lot is 50 foot by 130, and it has a single family home on that property. Surrounding land use and zoning to the north is a two family with an R3. Then we have single family residential to the south, east, and west, uh, all zoned R2, but there is some R3 uh, to the east as well. Under site history, the structure was on the Neighborhood Services Rental Inspection Program from August of 04 to March of 2006. The use of the property since 06 was single family unit, therefore the property was removed from the rental inspection program. The petitioner recently determined that it was in her best interest to convert the zoning at the site to single family to match the actual use of the property. <clears throat> the property consists of a 1,980 square foot, two and a half story frame residence built in 1888. A site plan of the property is attached. The petitioner plans to continue renting the residence as a single family property. The second floor kitchen, which did exist at the property in the past, has been removed. Planning staff inspected the structure to conform to the single family, to confirm that the use is to single family. Off street parking for two cars is available in the paved driveway and the detached two car garage located at the rear of the site. The community design review board minutes are attached. That concludes the staff report. Thank you. Could we have the petitioner on this item, please? Hi. Hi, could you state your name for the record? My name is Mary Ann Craig. Thank you. Do you have anything to add to staff's report? Well, no, not really. All right. Any comments or questions from the commission? I just want to make sure you understand you're losing the multifamily zoning. Yes. But the staff says it was not multifamily anyway, right? Correct. Okay. Thank you. That's correct. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Any comments or questions from the audience? Hearing none, a motion is in order for Z-2-15. So approval. Call the roll. Mr. Rusinellis? Aye. Mr. Shatina? Aye. Mr. Walden? Aye. Mr. Cox? Aye. Ms. DeAndre? Aye. Mr. Kella? Aye. Mr. Strong? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. The third item up is Z315. It's another down zoning, the reclassification of 103 North Prairie from the R3, which is the one and two unit, down to R2 single family. Uh, the applicant is Cafe Real Estate, LLC. The status of the applicants are Joe Canfora and Ferro Holdings, LLC. The request is the approval of the reclassification from the two unit down to the single family. And again, the purpose is to align the zoning with the land use at that site. Uh, it does have the R3. The request is for the R2. The location of 103 North Prairie is the west side of Prairie, north of John Street. Size of the property is 66 wide, 141 deep. It has a vacant structure, which is a former two unit there, surrounded on all sides by single family residential with an R2. The structure was a two unit residence on the Neighborhood Services Rental Inspection Program from its inception back in 1987 until October of 2011. A new owner purchased this property in 09 and subsequently a series of complaints about the condition of the property were reported in mid 11. Due to the cont continuing significant property maintenance issues, the uh, owner's failure to appear at administrative hearing, the, the building was vacated in late October of 2011. The vacant two-unit residence was sold to the petitioner in mid-2014. Neighborhood services inspected the building in late 2014. A list of the violations is attached. 
The petitioner recently determined that it was in his best interest to convert the residence to single family. Permits are being prepared for the renovation. The structure is currently gutted. A floor plan of the proposed three bedroom residence is attached. The property consists of a 1,428 square foot one story frame residence built in 1900. The petitioner plans to retain the ownership of the residence as a single unit rental property. Off street parking for two cars will be in a paved area at the rear of the site in the adjoining north south alley. Community design review board minutes are attached. That concludes the staff report. Thank you. Could we have the petitioner for this item, please? Nick Farrell with Cafe Real Estate. Did you have anything to add to staff's report? Uh, no. We purchased the property at auction about a year ago um, and just determined it was in our best interest to keep it single family. So we're changing the zoning to do that. Uh, the only thing I'd add is we're still determining whether the driveway entrance will come off the alley or off the front, um, but we will get the two off street spots at the end of the day. Very good. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Any comments or questions from the audience? Hearing none, a motion's in order for Z-3-15. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Shatina. Aye. Mr. Walden. Aye. Mr. Cox. Aye. Ms. DeAndre. Aye. Mr. Kella. Aye. Mr. Rusinellis. Aye. Mr. Strong. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now moving out to the far west side of Joliet, we've got B315, a vacation of a portion of an existing 15-foot wide public utility and drainage easement located at 2601 Plainfield Road. The applicant is Inland Real, Real Estate Corporation. They are the owners and the developers. The request is to vacation the public utility and drainage easement. To, the purpose is to allow the construction of Dick's Sporting Goods and the DSW Shoe Store. It's, that property is owned a B3 general business. Its location is 2601 Plainfield Road. Size of the easement to be vacated is 15 foot by 147, and it's a commercial property under construction at this time. Surrounding land use and zoning to the north, east, and west is all commercial with B3. To the south is residential with B3. Under site history, the 13 acre subject site comprises two lots, lots three and 10, within the U.S. Route 30 Kellogg Street subdivision, was, which most recently contained the demolished Cinemark Movies 10 building, and at present still contains the Barnes & Noble and the Party City building. The new proposed Dick's Sporting Goods and DSW Shoe Warehouse building is proposed for the spring of 2015 construction start. Special information, the petitioner wishes to vacate the 15 foot by 147 foot public utility and drainage easement portion because if left in its current location, it would encroach beneath a new store. The approval of the vacation is subject to a new easement being dedicated, and there is a plan of easement that will be done at the council level. The city's public works and utilities department is in favor of the vacation and is subject to a new, e new easement being dedicated. The city's public works and utilities department is in, vacation, in favor of the vacation. And as the writing of the staff report, no other opposition from any other utility company was received. The Community Design Review Board reviewed this April 2nd. The minutes are attached. That concludes the staff report. Thank you. Can we have the petitioner on this item, please? I'm Pam Sullins with Inland Real Estate Corporation. Thank you. Did you have anything to add? No. Uh, any comments or questions? Just, I don't know if you noticed, there was a picture in the Herald News yesterday's paper of, I think, your... The head honcho from Inland, he uh, had a ribbon cutting or, or whatever. We did, a groundbreaking, groundbreaking ceremony. So, so you're off to the races on the reconstruction. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jim, I have a question uh, for utilities. Mm -hmm. um, do we have this easement that's getting vacated because the building's going to be encroaching? Uh, are these is the water? Is there any water main in no, there? No, it's just drainage easement. I don't it's think just the there's any easement. utilities there, but they're going to grant a new location for the drainage when they get when they get. Uh, it, when we go through, go through the vacation process uh, at the council level, there'll, there'll be another grant of easement to replace it. Very good. Any other comments or questions from the commission? Any comments or questions from the audience? Hearing none, then a motion's in order for V-3-15. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Walden. Aye. Mr. Cox. Aye. Ms. DeAndre. Aye. Mr. Kella. Aye. Mr. Rusinellis. Aye. Mr. Shatina. Aye. Mr. Strong. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll move to the opposite side of the city, the southeast portion. We've got B415, which is another vacation. 
It's the vacation of a 10 foot wide by 108.9 foot portion of an existing public utility easement located at 1700 Center Point Way. The applicant is Center Point Joliet Terminal Railroad uh, in care of Jeremy Gray. Uh, the status is there, the owners and the developers of the property. The requested action is the vacation of a public utility easement. The purpose is to allow the construction of the Saturn Agricultural Transload Facility. That area is all zoned IT, which is the intermodal terminal district zoning. The location is 1700 Center Point Way. Easement size again is 10 by 108. Existing land use is currently undeveloped, under construction industrial. Surrounding land use and zoning to the north, east, and west is all industrial with the IT. To the south is undeveloped with IT. Under site history, Center Point Joliet Terminal Railroad LLC has petitioned for multiple requests heard and approved by the Plan Commission and the Mayor and the Council for Center Point Intermodal Center at Joliet Development. The majority of the property was annexed zoned IT and approved with the annexation agreement in Phase 1, which was December of 08. Phase 2, which included all the Center Point hold holdings at that time was approved in March of 2010. Special information, the petitioner wishes to vacate this 10 foot wide portion of the public utility and drainage easement. If left in its current location, it would encroach beneath the Saturn Agricultural Transload Facility, which is under construction. The approval of the vacation is subject to the new easement being dedicated and they will be doing that as part of this approval process. City's Public Works and Utilities Department is in favor of the vacation and as of the writing of the staff report, there was no opposition from any other utility company. Community Design Review Board minutes are, are uh, from April the 2nd are attached and that concludes the staff report. Thank you. Could we have the petitioner for this item, please? And I don't see Jeremy here, but I do know I had to take my daughter to the airport mid, uh, mid afternoon this afternoon and when I arrived back just before the meeting started, I saw that he did have a call to me, so I'm assuming that uh, he was trying to tell me that they couldn't make today. Uh, I don't know if... Oh, yeah, and Mike Hansen also represents right, us. Right, he does. So because of that, I would recommend that we proceed. Uh, we could listen to any concerns from the audience, but in the past on a vacation like this, Center Point owns... Uh, in all directions, they, uh, with the exception of Autobahns, kind of across the public highway here. I don't think there'd be anybody, any adjoining property owner that would have a concern. We could listen to the concerns of the people, but <coughs> I recommend that we proceed with this. It's somewhat perfunctory to the, the development that's happened down there. Very good. Any comments or questions from the commission? Any comments or questions from the audience? Hearing none, then a motion's in order for V-4-15. So moved. Second. Call the roll. Mr. Cox? Aye. Ms. DeAndre? Aye. Mr. Kella? Aye. Mr. Rusinellis? Aye. Mr. Shatina? Aye. Mr. Walden? Aye. Mr. Strong? Aye. All right, that concludes our regular agenda. Now up what we have is a study session, and we have not had a study session in quite some time. Uh, I think the housing business took a hiatus for a uh, five or six years, so it's nice to see that they're back at it again, and I guess we'll call Rob Zaromsky up from MI Homes, to, and very quickly while he's coming up, I'll read the staff report. Uh, we've got MI Homes, the owner and the developer is requesting uh, approval of five additional single family models to allow the continued development in two residential subdivisions. Uh, the subdivisions have the R1B single family residential zoning district and we're talking about Lakewood Prairie subdivision which is the southeast corner of Theodore and Ridge and then also Kearney Glen which is the northwest corner of Black and County Line. Uh, we've got the acreages listed there. They're all uh, single family existing subdivisions with undeveloped sites that are under construction and we've got surrounding land uses and zonings all listed here and it's as some of it's an unincorporated uh, Kendall County adjoining this, these properties, and but all of it's been uh, in constant development over the years for site history. In July of 08, four additional Lakewood Prairie house plans were approved. Lakewood Prairie was annexed to Joliet in 2003. Initial development of Lakewood Prairie occurred between 03 and 06. Kearney Glen was annexed in 04, and the development of the subdivision has been ongoing since 04. House plans in both subdivisions range from 2,048 square foot to 3,530 square foot. Under special information, the de developer would like to add five new models to the product line in Lakewood Prairie and Kearney Glen. 
All proposed models are two-story with an offer three to four bedroom. The proposed models include expanded storage or third car garage options. The new models range in size from 1,815 square foot to 2,289 square feet. Building elevations and floor plans are attached. It should be noted that only two models are being introduced that are smaller than the models currently offered in Lakewood Prairie in Kearney Glen. Those models are the Berto and then the Archer. I think we've got copies and we'll go through them all in a minute. The purpose is introducing uh, slightly smaller models is to create an upscale yet affordable and visually appealing set of house plans to stay competitive in today's market. The plans complement the traditional style, the character, and the upscale appearance of the current plans offered in both subdivisions. House plans include covered front porches, window shutter option, the location of at least one window on each elevation of the proposed housing. 812 roof pitches will be provided on the main roof on each model, as well as in the dormers and uh, gable ends facing the street. The anti-monotony ordinance and the brick requirement will be adhered to. Our architectural style shingles will be utilized on all models. And that concludes our staff report. Thank you. Could we have the petitioners for this item, please? Hello there. My name is Rob Zaromsky with uh, My Homes. I'm the Vice President of Land. And uh, with me, I have Dan O'Malley, who is our architect uh, for My Homes. Uh, you know, everything in the staff report, uh, you know, we concur with. And, uh, you know, in 2013, we came in and purchased the remaining uh, home sites developed already at Kearney Glen and also at Lakewood Prairie. And at that time, when we purchased the home sites at Kearney Glen, we introduced five uh, floor plans that were approved uh, by the city. And we took those same home plans over to Lakewood Prairie. And I know in, in the staff report, it does say that we're introducing five new plans. The Baldwin that you see in your packet here today was previously approved. We, we had just had the square footage uh, for the Baldwin in our first submittal was 2,226 square feet. And the one that you see today in your packet, we, we increased it by about 60 feet. I think it was a housekeeping item on our end. So it, it, it basically the Baldwin is the same uh, style, if, if you will. And we're here to answer any questions, uh, comments. Any comments or questions from the commission? Mr. Chairman. Yes. Jim, do you have a picture of the rear elevation on any of these? I think there's uh, rear elevations on, I've got two sets of plans here. And uh, let me see if I... Rob, I don't know that we have rear elevations, do we? I think in the black and the whites in the back. I want to make sure there's... that there's not just one window sitting around a 40-foot expanse. No. Um, Usually the big concern is in the on the side elevations, and we do require at least one window on the side ele elevations. But, Rob, in your house styles, you have multiple windows on the rear elevations, correct? We do. Yeah. We do, and that's, that's, a, that's relevant. You can actually see those on the floor plans where there's okay. quite a few on the back, actually. Yeah, I suppose, yes, if you look at the floor plan, you can kind of see that where the, where the windows are in the back. Anti-monotony anti ordinance obtains. Anti-monotony yes, ordinance yes, obtains. Yes, yes, all that. Okay, and the square footages that were originally were talked about are either the same or exceeded. Yeah, well, in this particular case, these folks are offering a smaller model, but we do have, when the other builders were in those subdivisions, we had models in, the, in that same square the footage same range. Major? What was the, was there a study done indicating, like when you guys bought in 2013, was it? Yes. Was there something telling you that the market was turning or that, they, I know the prices were low on the land, which was good, but is there something telling you that, uh, I know there are other areas around that are building rapidly. Sure. And you see the same uh, position here? In, in, in Joliet area or in the Chicago land area? Shanahan is doing it, Minooka is doing it, Joliet in areas is doing it. I'm assuming that this is probably as good an area as there is. Well. There's a good, I mean, it's a good area. I mean, I, yeah. you know, in, in the early 2000s and the boom, everybody was in, was in this area. Yeah. And as you see, there are other, there's other activity in the area. And introducing these plans are going to be able to have us be, so pretty good be in that area. I mean, we're still going to keep the original five, yeah. adding the additional four that we have. Now we have nine home plans. And in here, we have four different elevations for each. What so. the square footage is run in this particular subject? Is it 2,200 and up? Is that what it is? I, this no one, I think, Jim? 
for oh. for Lakewood Prairie, I think we have it in the staff report that it's from. He, he reported to, uh, 2,048 to 3,040. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's good. yeah. That's good. But I think we've we approved smaller through the houses that Lakewood was going to build, but I don't think anybody chose the smaller house plans when the subdivision was first introduced before the economy crashed. We had. So, so these things aren't out of character for what was built and occupied up until this point in time. Right. That's All right, good. Thank you. And as a matter of fact, I think sometimes that uh, these have, in my opinion, uh, better street appeal than maybe some of the ones that were built back early on with, by the other yeah, builders. Yeah, front, front appeal, certainly. And, and so it's kind of nice to have uh, introduction of new builders in some of these existing subdivisions because they bring a whole new portfolio to really break the monotony up because their houses are architecturally way different than what Lakewood built and what uh, what uh, Kennedy built in the two subdivisions when they first came out of the box. Jim, um, I know we, we stated a few times the anti-monotony clauses are in there and um, the brick frontage, but is this off of a mix in between our latest set of standards and what was originally there or no, they're they going to have to meet the newest requirements, the uh, external landscaping yes. requirements, everything that we put in there? Yeah. Well, th those subdivisions, both of those subdivisions were new enough that our rules were in place and we've adhered to those same set of rules Very good. Th for this whole period. So, yeah, they'll meet that, that or exceed it. What's going to be the uh, uh, cost of these homes? Well, we the plan. I mean, we wanted to come and get approvals, oh. and and that's one thing right now is we're drawing up the plans, going out the bid, getting it vetted that way. You know, we'll, we'll have a better understanding at that time. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Any comments or questions from the audience? Hearing none, a motion in order for M-2-15. So moved. Second. Second. Call the roll. Ms. DeAndre. Aye. Mr. Shatina. Aye. Mr. Kella? Aye. Mr. Rusinellis? Aye. Mr. Walden? Aye. Mr. Cox? Aye. Mr. Strong? Aye. All right, thank, thank you, you, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, according to the agenda, next up would be the approval of the minutes of the March 19th meeting. Is there a motion to approve? So, so moved. moved. Do we hear a second? Second. All in favor signify by aye. 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 Any nays or changes? Hearing none, next up would be adjournment. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. So second. Moved. All in favor, signify oh. by aye. Aye. We are adjourned, and thank you very much. I know filing deadline is tomorrow. I know that we are going to have, tomorrow we are going to have Akia's second warehouse is going to come in. And then we also know that the Cadence development, which is also at Laraway Cross.